Hey y'all, it is Celine. Welcome to my homestead kitchen where today we're going to be canning pork. So stay tuned. So today I went to my local small town grocery store in the next town over, we don't have one here, and um, they were having a big meat sale. So uh, a lot of what I wanted they were out of already. It just started yesterday and it went through like next Sunday, but they were out already. So a lot of people are scarfing it up and that's good. Um, I encourage you to do the same thing. But they had pork loin for $1.99. And then they had these pork burgers for, um, I threw it away already, but they, there are 10 burgers for like seven bucks. So I was good with that. And there's two of those packages. These burgers are frozen solid. So I'm just gonna take a few at a time, pop them in the microwave for six, you know, 40, 50, 60 seconds, just enough to soften them up a little bit. I'm going to just brown them. I am not going to cook them through and um, I'll show you that process as I go. I see my battery is about to die so back in a minute. Um, I am going to um, just kind of nuke these just enough to almost thaw them and I don't want them squishy though and then throw them in um, on my griddle or a frying pan and just barely brown them up. I don't want to cook them through because um, they don't need that. They're going to cook just fine during the canning process and I won't lose all those juices. That way they'll be in the jar. So I've just had them on there on this side just for a couple of minutes. I don't want them done. I just don't want them to stick together when I pan them. And if I leave them completely raw like this, much like hamburgers, um, if it's totally raw, when you pan it, it'll come out like meatloaf. And so I don't want these to come out like some big glom of meat. I want them to be individual patties. Kind of pour that one up. But. Let me see if I can bring you in closer so you can see. Whoop, where are you? So that's about right on both sides. So I've got um, another 16 more to go. So let me get those done and I will come back when they're all browned. Okay, y'all. So I am back. I got them all browned. And I've been playing with different sizes of jars and how they're going to fit in here. So I've got three jars filled already. These are pretty sizable patties. And as you can see, let's see if I can, I mean, there's kind of some bloody juice there so that you can see that these are not done. I mean, you can see those are raw. They just are slightly browned on the outside just to keep them from sticking because they are pretty crammed in here. So as you can see they're pretty they're pretty crammed in there. But let's get the rest of them jarred up and see what we've got. So you kind of have to Fold them over a little bit. And I noticed the last time if I pulled this second one out, put the third one in there, then they would go back in. Now this third one is pretty bent over. But that's okay. It's all going to taste the same. So I have I saved three patties out for our supper and then I've got one left here so I guess I'll make a fourth patty for supper. And I have 
five jars going on here and that's exactly what my small electric canner it's a small batch canner that's a exactly what it'll hold so what I'm gonna do here this this is gonna make a lot of its own broth so I'm not gonna fill this up but I am gonna put just maybe just a little bit half a teaspoon or even less of my French onion soup which is homemade it's a dry soup mix and I have um, I'm pretty sure I have a video of that I'll check it out and link it if I do or put it in the description but if I don't I'll need to do that next time I make some and then I'm just gonna fill this eh, about halfway because it's gonna make its own juices as it goes and I don't want to overflow it and honestly I wouldn't have to add any water or broth or anything to this you can also use broth instead of my soup mix or plain water whatever you want to do and you do not have to add anything that pressure cook that pressure canner will make it make its own juice but it might only come up to here here and then the rest of this will be exposed while that won't hurt anything um, it kind of looks fugly so I uh, try to give it a little bit of a broth so that when it does make its own it will come all the way up and not leave that extra on top which tends to kind of turn a, a weird gray color doesn't taste any different it there's nothing wrong with it nothing however it just isn't pretty so then I'm going to debubble you want to make sure you get all your bubbles out all your air bubbles got to be gone Trying to be careful not to tear this meat up though. And, excuse the noise, but I'm just kind of doing that to make sure I didn't have any air bubbles in between the pieces of meat. Now, this is super, super important. You have to make sure you wipe your rims. And I always use vinegar if you're using anything that could be greasy. There can't be any little pieces of anything on your rim and there can't be any greasy residue of any kind or it could prevent a seal. So we are going to make sure that everything is nice and clean and grease free Now, you do not have to sterilize your jars anymore. You do not have to sterilize your lids. You used to have to simmer these so the little rubber ring on here would soften, but they've changed what this is made of, so or it's different in some way, and now the manufacturer who is ball is telling you you no longer have to do that. So you make sure that your rim is clean, that there's no chips, no bumps, no nothing. You look at your inside of your, ring, your lids to make sure that that looks okay. I have had a couple that had a bald spot or a big weird run in it and I was afraid something might not work. I've also had, I've actually never, maybe once had a chip, but the very first canner load I ever did I had this great big glass knot on here that would on the lip that would have prevented a seal for sure. So always check the tops, the, the lips of your jars and your lids. Then you just put your ring on there, finger tight. You don't want to, uh, but you want it snug. Okay, so we're good with the that. That looks good. Your type. Now, 
Now, let's go on over to the canner. I am using my Nesco electric canner. Turn this a little bit so you can see it better. These are hard to come by right now, but I know that um, Presto makes one as well, and I think you can find those. And I hear they're, I mean, I haven't heard anything negative about them. I love my Nesco canner. They're also, uh, you may find them Carey, C-A-R-E-Y, smart canners. They're the exact same thing. Carey's the old owner of the company. Nesco bought out Carey. So if you find either one, you're getting the exact same canner. Just the name on here is different. I have had both. I have both actually this is my third nesco i love them so much um i wore one out and i have two that i use together on a regular basis so this canner requires eight cups of water and because i am these patties have cooled down fairly well they're almost room temperature i can use room temperature jars and room temperature water if these were cooked and really hot, then I would need hot jars, hot broth, hot water in my canner. You always keep cold with cold, hot with hot. Don't mix them or you're going to break jars. Okay, so here we go. This canner holds five pints or four quarts. So there's my five pints. I'm going to close my lid until the arrows match. I'm going to make sure this is on exhaust. And I'm going to hit high. These are pints, so I'm doing 75 minutes. All meats and beans. Um, are 75 minutes for pints and 90 minutes for quarts. Then I'm going to hit start. Now this little dial is going to spin, this little light is going to spin until it builds up pressure just like a stovetop canner. The light's really bad there. Just like a stovetop canner um, boy, I can't get away from the light, can I? Oh well. Just like a stovetop canner, um, how many times can I say that in a row? You let it build up, you let it get hot, and you let it build up steam, and you put the weight on or whatever, and then you let it um, vent for 10 minutes, and then you start your timer. This will automatically do that. It's going to beep at me when it's to the point, the pressure point, where it needs to let off steam for 10 minutes. And then all I have to do is go over and flip that from exhaust to airtight. And then it will do its own countdown and start its own countdown of, of the letting off steam. And it doesn't always take 10 minutes. Sometimes it only takes two or three. Remember, this is highly, it's got a regulator on it. It knows what it needs. And so as soon as it has let off enough steam, then it will automatically kick on and start counting down from 75 to zero. Then at that point, we leave it sit for an hour after the, it hits zero, it's done, um, to relieve the pressure. And then the lid will not open if it's got pressure. And then you have to wait that hour. Then you can open the lid and take them out. So when this is done, we'll be back. So I think maybe I didn't finish my thought a minute ago when I was talking about you don't have to sterilize and you don't have to heat the lids. I said you don't have to sterilize the jars and then I moved to a different subject I think uh, on the lids. But the, you don't have to sterilize jars anymore whether you're pressure canning or water bath canning as long as it processes for 10 minutes or more. It has to be at least 10 minutes. Anything less than 10 minutes and your jars have to be sterilized um, and your lids. So um, there are very few things that you don't process for at least 10 minutes. I can't even think of anything. But um, I'm sure there's something, but I I'm not thinking of anything. But anyway, um, always just, as long as you follow that rule, 
any kind of germ, any kind of botulism, spore, anything like that cannot live in heat, that intensive heat for um, more than 10 minutes. So, or under 10 minutes actually. So anyway, that's the deal on that. So now while my jars are in the canner and they are, the little dial is still spinning, um, it hasn't started doing spitting steam or doing anything yet. I am going to take this pork loin and get it ready to um, put in jars. So basically, I got some beautiful pork loin. It's got a little fat on the back that I'm going to trim up a little, but honestly, I'm not going to sweat that too much. I am not one of those people that feels like they have to trim off all the fat or fry your hamburger up and, and rinse it and rinse it and rinse it. To me, that's, that's just taking all the flavor away and it's not hurting a thing in that jar. It's not going to change the way it processes. It's not going to change the way it, it um, you know, it's not going to mess anything up. A little fat is not going to hurt anything. Now, if it's just wads and wads of fat, then that's different. But this is very thin, like super duper thin, seriously thin. So I'll just cut off what it what wants to come, and what doesn't is staying, because I'm not going to uh, mess with all that, because it really is just fine. It processes in high enough um, pressure and for long enough that it'll just melt that away. So I'm just basically going to just chunk this up. Now see, I could slice this for beautiful pork chops, boneless pork chops, but it is very much, it processes very much like chicken. Um, you know how chicken kind of, um, all the chunks kind of come together and then um, just think of, of a store-bought can of chicken. They're all chunked together and when you go to put a fork in them they just flake and fall apart. Well pork does the same thing so it's not going to come out like a pork chop. Um, it won't even come out of the jar whole like a pork chop. It'll be too soft. So I'm just going to chunk this up and we will be able to use this for pulled pork. Um, I can use it kind of like I would a roast, maybe take some broth and cook some potatoes and carrots, throw the meat in and have, you know, a, a very similar experience. Um, you can, um, see, it beeped at me, now it is on the 10 minute countdown, my, my canner over there. I guess you probably heard that. So I'm just chunking this up in, in, you know, pretty good size chunks. And then I'm going to pack them, cold pack them just the way they are. Raw pack, I guess is what it's called. I'm going to raw pack them. And um, this makes amazing um, barbecued pork, pulled pork. This makes, uh, we've used it in... Um, oriental things and stir fries and um, oh, what else have I used it for? Stew. I've made stew with it. I've made soups with it. Um, I, I make gravy and just heat it up in the gravy and use it over potatoes kind of like a, a beef Manhattan, an open face beef sandwich kind of. I, pork is one of my favorite canned meats. My first, I don't know, I have three top ones. I love canned chicken, canned hamburger, and canned um, pork. So they all have their own uses, and they all are really handy to have in the cupboard. You know, while I'm cutting this up, I, I want to talk to you about why I'm doing this. I'm doing it obviously for food security. 
Um, we enjoy it. We like it. The convenience of just being able to go in my extended pantry and pull uh, three or four jars of things and just whip up a meal really fast when I don't feel like cooking. Um, it's all from scratch. Any that that would be considered from scratch, but to starting from the very beginning with nothing pre-made from scratch, you know, sometimes that takes an hour or more. Um, there are lots of days I love that, and then there are other days where I just don't feel it. And um, and I know that we're all like that. It's not just me; you are too. So that's why it's so nice to have the convenience of canned food. But on top of that, food security is a big deal right now, y'all. Okay, y'all, we are back. And I have got all the meat cut up. You know, I didn't even pay any attention to how many pounds that was. I'll have to drag the labels out and look. But I've got 10 jars here. That's two canners full. I do have a second canner. My first one is still going with the pork burgers. I am going to use... I get this from um, Gordon Food Service. It's a restaurant supply. It is um, pork ham base. I am going to take a half a teaspoon and I'm going to put this in every jar. Okay. So that's the first five jars. And then I'm just going to take my meat. And you don't have to do that. You can put salt. You can put nothing. You can put seasoning, barbecue seasoning, whatever you want um, in here. It's it's whatever your little old, whoop, wrong jar. Whatever your little old heart desires. The reason I didn't put them in these five is just because I want to make sure I have five more jars worth. I'm sure I will, but... I need a knife. So, I just kind of need a knife to fill these jars the rest of the way up without over filling them. Sometimes you have to kind of cut a piece. Perfect. You want to kind of pack them down in there. Again, you don't want to overfill, but you want to make sure they're full. And I am easily going to have three canner loads of this, I can tell. So I'm going to have to go wash some more jars and get some more ready. But, again, you do not have to use any kind of seasoning at all. You can put it in there plain. I just kind of like the extra porkiness it brings out in the meat. So I don't add salt with this because the very first ingredient in that ham seasoning is salt. So it's salty enough. And when you put salt, so I kind of treat this like salt, when you put salt um, in your canned goods, it's a teaspoon per pint, I mean a half a teaspoon per pint, half a teaspoon and a teaspoon per quart. And the only reason that you're, you're doing salt is for flavor. It has nothing to do with the canning process. And you can use either canning salt or pink salt or whatever. Just don't use iodized table salt because it makes the liquid cloudy. I mean, I don't think it hurts it, but it makes the liquid cloudy and then it just doesn't look as pretty. So once again, I don't need any broth or any liquid at all, and it will can just fine, but it'll be kind of a weird gray color, and I don't know. I just don't think it looks as nice. And so I am going to fill this about halfway. And sometimes you got to do the bubbler to get it down in there. That's about right. Now I'm going to have to go back over these rims because you want to do the debubbler. I should have waited. Put a hair more.
So by doing this, I might be getting something on the rim of the glass of the jar. So I want to make sure that I get that off. Get all the air out. Get that liquid work down there. Now I'm going to do the rims again. Can't tell you how many times I've, I've done that. That I've had to do the rims twice. But such is life. It's fine. I want to kind of look and make sure I feel like I have enough water in some of these. I'm going to cover these a little bit more than halfway full, I think. Simply because this, you know, pork loin is a drier pork, so it won't be quite as juicy. And as you go, you'll learn like what what needs how much. And, and like I said, you don't need any, so it isn't like you're going to mess up if you don't have enough in there. Uh, it just, if you have any on top that's uncovered, once it's processed, it turns a funny little color and it looks unappealing. It's still fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So you put your lids on. Tighten. Finger tight. Finger tight. Finger tight. Again, you don't... Put them on, finger tight. It's that easy. Okay, so I've got, like I said, at least 10 more jars and maybe closer to 15. I will bring you back whenever I am done processing them and I'll show you um, everything that we did today. And um, yeah, I'm excited. We're getting a lot, a lot for the pantry today. So I'll see you in a bit. I just wanted to come back on here real quick just to remind you, you always need your rack at the bottom whenever you're canning or water bath canning. And if you don't have a rack, you make sure that you have a nice thick towel on the bottom because you don't want your jars on the bottom where the heat element is or it could break your glass. So anyway, I did forget to mention that. Don't forget your rack. Okay, y'all, so here we are. There are 20 cans of meat there. There were five cans uh, or jars of uh, the pork patties, which, by the way, were delicious. That's what we had for supper. And there's enough for another meal yet. And then we had, um, yeah, 15 jars of the pork. Now, you've heard of ugly chicken, and if not, that's what they call canned, home canned chicken. Well, this is really ugly pork, and, you, and it really is not attractive, but I got to tell you, it's delicious. It's really good. So that's it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a like because that helps the algorithm and helps to spread the video around. Please share with friends and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be part of the community because I would love for you to be here. So until next time, I thank you. I love you. God bless you. Mwah.